Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll show you how to transform some thrift store finds into high-end pieces similar to what you would find at Restoration Hardware, Anthropology, Pottery Barn, Crate and Barrel, but we're going to make them at a fraction of the price. I use some very basic supplies that you will likely already find in your home, such as baking soda, some sponges, spackle, and of course some paint. I'll walk you through two transformations and toward the end of the video, I'll show you some other pieces that I've done to give you some ideas on how to create your own. Using thrift store pieces is a really inexpensive way to repurpose and bring those pieces that may not be so attractive back to life. So grab some supplies and let's have some fun painting. For the first project, I'll be using this black base that I purchased from Walmart years ago. It is very inexpensive and I believe they do still sell it. I love the shape of it, but it definitely needs a makeover. Here's a look at the before and after, so keep watching to see how I did it. To keep the inside and bottom of the base black, I cut a thin piece of cardboard or poster board and taped it to the top and bottom of the base. When I start a project like this, I usually have an idea of how I want it to look but I almost always end up changing my mind as I'm working the project. I start out by using the color mineral and just tapping it on with a cotton pad. I didn't want to cover the entire vase because I wasn't sure if I wanted some of that original black coming through. I gave the vase a couple of coats of the color mineral, letting it dry in between coats. A lot of the video is self-explanatory, so you'll notice some changes in speed throughout the video. For this project, I used a variety of grays and browns, including Waverly chalk paint in the colors Elephant, Truffle, Nimbus, and Mineral. And then I used some Apple Barrel paints in the colors Chestnut, Khaki, and White. This is what I have so far after giving it a couple of coats of mineral. To give the vase some nice warm brown undertones, I'm using the paint Warm Brown by Anita's from Hobby Lobby. I used a variety of different tools to apply the paint. In this particular project, I'm using cotton pads, but you can also use paper towels, sponges, or even a paintbrush. Some of the areas would naturally be darker, so I go in with the chalk paint in the color Truffle and darken up some of the areas, mainly concentrating around the bottom, the handles, and under the top lip of the vase. While the brown paint is still wet, I tap some of the lighter color all around it to blend it in softly. Then I go in with a wet clean cotton pad and just lightly tap all of the colors to make them blend in a little more smoothly. I use similar techniques on all of these projects, but I change how I apply them just based on the look that I want. It really just takes a lot of playing around using wet sponges, dry sponges, different tools to apply, different colors. It's really all about layering colors and blending them in.
For me, these projects are the most time consuming, not because they're difficult. It's more a matter of me being very picky about how I want it to look and changing my mind throughout the project. Here you can see all of the different colors that I've incorporated, and it's really starting to look more like a stone vase. And I'm just alternating different colors, creating different highlights and lowlights to really give this space some dimension. I lightly tap in just a little bit of black in some areas and cover most of it with other colors, just letting a bit of that black come through. and start working some of that truffle brown toward the handles. You'll see me swiping some of the lighter colors horizontally just to accentuate those natural grooves and striations in the base and give it more texture. You'll notice I have some bare black areas in the base because I'm working with some wet cotton pads. If I don't let the paint dry enough before applying another color, it actually removes some of the paint. Here's a closer look at how I work some of that color horizontally to accentuate the lines in the vase.
I love all the colors in this vase. It's really starting to come along. I used apple barrel paint in the color chestnut to give some of the areas a rusty look. Using a dry cotton pad, I'm applying white very, very lightly over the entire vase just to give it more dimension. Using a fluffy makeup brush, I go in with some dark gray and black chalk just to give a little bit more dimension. The camera doesn't pick it up very well, but it does make a nice subtle difference. Let's take a look at the finished piece. I love all of the highlights and lowlights giving this project a lot of dimension and character and it really has a warm earthy look to it. This next piece is a jug I found at my local thrift store. You can see that it's mostly brown with some black in it, and I really love the shape of it, but was not too excited about the color. 
I had a couple of different ideas in mind for how I wanted this to look. After trying a couple of different things, I ended up deciding to go with a black stone look. Here's a peek at the before and after, so let's take a look at how I did it. I've seen some examples of people using household spices and dirt to create a really rustic look. So I painted the entire jug black and then used a variety of spices to give this an earthy look. But I just didn't like how it turned out, so I decided to paint it black, keeping a little bit of that color from the spices coming through. Before I finished painting it black, I decided I wasn't going to like that look and decided to change it to more of a black stone look. So I gave the entire jug a base coat of black and then went over it with Waverly chalk paint and the color Elephant, tapping it on in different areas to give it highlights and lowlights. I used a really old paintbrush with firm bristles to apply the paint and I'm using my fingers to blend the colors together. I added a variety of different shades of gray, black, and white to give the project highlights, lowlights, and dimension. Because I had a variety of spices and dirt on the project originally, it really gave me a lot of great texture to work with to create those highlights and lowlights. I'm using some black paint to really work into those recessed areas to give this project more depth. And I'm going in really lightly with a paper towel and applying some of that black paint. I really love all of the texture that was created using the spices. After letting the paint dry, I go in with black again just to darken up some of those areas. I'm using the same color chestnut that I did in my previous project to give this piece more dimension so that it's not just all black and white.
The brown really gives this piece a subtle change of color. Here's a look at the finished piece. I like how it came out. I'm just not sure if I want to keep it this color or change it, but for now, I'm pretty happy with it. For the next project, I'm using this large clear glass vase that I found at a thrift store. I gave it a coat of white spray paint, then went over it again with some white chalk paint mixed with baking soda to create a really thick consistency, giving this vase some really great texture. I did leave the bottom of the vase untouched so that you can see that it is clear glass. And this is a look at the finished piece. I absolutely love it. I used a variety of shades of gray, white, and territorial beige by Apple Barrel Paints. I really love the dimension of this piece. I think it turned out really great. It is one of my favorites. For the next project, I'll be using this vase that I found at a thrift store. I love the shape, but hated the design painted on it. I thought this vase would look much better with the contemporary look. So I found some inspiration from the Restoration Hardware website. Using an asymmetrical pattern, I taped off three sections of the vase. I painted the bottom section with Rust-Oleum Stone Texture Paint, the black section using black matte spray paint, and I used the color Castle Rock for the top section. It has a really simplistic design, but it was pretty difficult lining up the tape on a rounded surface. This piece is also from a thrift store. I originally used the same spice and dirt technique that I did with the jug and decided that I didn't like it. So I painted it with some different shades of gray and white mixed with baking soda and applied the paint using some wet paper towel. This piece has a lot of texture on it, not only from the baking soda and spices underneath, but also from the paper towel. When you're working with wet paper towels, some of it can come off while you're painting, and you'll probably want to pull that off your paint thinking it looks like a terrible mistake, but it actually gives a lot of great texture. This is another one of my favorite pieces. I really love the different colors and texture in it. It doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before and I really like it. I found this really large and heavy piece from a thrift store. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it, but I definitely wanted to cover it with some spackle to get rid of that design. Honestly, this is the project that I spent most of my time on and gave me most of my headaches. I changed my mind so many times about the colors that I wanted to use that I almost gave up entirely. This face probably has more coats of paint on it than any house I've ever lived in. I finally decided on some earthy brown tones used for the vase. I'll show you this project a little closer in an upcoming video because I do have another DIY that complements it coming up. This is a much smaller piece similar to the one I just showed you. I covered it with spackle and sanded it to get rid of that original design. It really gave me some interesting patterns to work with when I painted it using a variety of blacks, grays, and white. For the last piece I'll be showing you today, I wanted to create a black marble effect. This vase was originally a mauve color. For the technique, I used very wet paper towels and kept working with the paint while it was wet, and it gave me this really nice marbled effect. I spray painted it with black, 
and then painted it with chalk paint using the colors black, gray, and white. This is definitely another one of my favorites. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it has a very realistic look of black marble. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I hope it gave you some good ideas on how to create your own aged vessels. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.